Hello, my name is Dr. Kimberly Cheatham. Welcome to this presentation on fetal surveillance. Here are the objectives for this presentation. Let's begin with the basics of reading a fetal monitoring strip. The pregnant woman in the photograph is lying on a bed in the triage area of an obstetric unit. She has several belts strapped to her abdomen, collecting information from the fetus and the uterus. Notice the strip of paper coming from the machine on her left. This is the fetal monitoring strip. The strip records fetal heart rate and uterine activity over time. A similar strip is illustrated on the right side of the screen. The top half of the strip corresponds to the fetus's heartbeat. The bottom half displays maternal contractions over time, although no contractions are seen on this fetal strip. This slide shows two different fetal strips on the right, the black and white one on top and the orange one on bottom. The basic components of a fetal strip that should be evaluated include the baseline fetal heart rate, which is the average fetal heart rate over time, variability, which is the amount of change present in the fetal heart rate above and below the baseline, accelerations when the fetal heart rate rises above the baseline, seen in the black and white strip, decelerations when the fetal heart rate drops below the baseline as seen in the orange strip, and your overall impression of whether the strip shows a well oxygenated baby or a baby who is not oxygenated well. The lower half of each strip shows a wavy line that represents intermittent maternal contractions. This graph demonstrates different amounts of fetal heart rate variability. The fetal heart rate displayed on top is flat and does not vary around the baseline. This is an example of absent variability. The second fetal heart rate shows just a little variation around the baseline, less than 5 beats above and below. This is minimal variability. Moderate variability can be seen in the third fetal heart rate with a variation of 5 to 25 beats around the baseline. Marked variability occurs when substantial variation is seen in relation to the fetal heart rate baseline. The normal fetal heart rate ranges from 110 to 160 beats per minute. If you look at the fetal strip closely, there are numbers present vertically that indicate what the fetal heart rate is. The normal fetal heart rate also shows moderate variability with occasional accelerations and small or absent decelerations. Notice the large contractions present. Now that you're familiar with the basics of reading a fetal monitoring strip, we can discuss anapartum fetal surveillance. The word anapartum refers to the entire period of time during the pregnancy that occurs before labor. However, anapartum testing is typically performed during the third trimester. We use anapartum testing to ensure fetal well-being during a pregnancy. Because most pregnancies progress normally, anapartum testing is only necessary for high-risk patients. Common indications for anapartum fetal monitoring are listed here. The basis of fetal monitoring is that healthy, well-oxygenated fetuses move frequently. Fetal movement correlates with fetal heart rate acceleration seen on the monitoring strip. Fetuses have periods of sleep when they're not active, but these episodes do not last longer than about 20 minutes each. In the third trimester, the mother can feel about 75% of fetal movement. One of the easiest methods to assess fetal well-being is with kick counts. This is something mom can do at home and it does not cost anything. Each day, the mom takes time out to pay attention to her baby's movements. She counts movements over a two-hour period. Ten or more movements are normal. Less than 10 fetal movements in two hours is an indication for further testing at the office or hospital, usually with a non-stress test. This patient is undergoing a non-stress test, or NST. She has monitors strapped to her abdomen, and the paper strip is recording the baby's heartbeat and maternal contractions. Because well-oxygenated babies move a lot and fetal movement is associated with accelerations on the fetal strip, the goal of the NST is to determine if fetal heart rate accelerations are present. These accelerations are not seen in a poorly oxygenated fetus. A reassuring test result is called a reactive NST. There are specific criteria to make this assessment, including two fetal heart rate accelerations occurring in a 20-minute period of monitoring. 
A strip that does not meet the criteria is called a non-reactive NST. If this occurs, further testing is indicated. This fetal strip demonstrates the baby's heart rate on top and minimal uterine activity on bottom. The fetal heart rate shows a moderate variability, which is reassuring, and two large accelerations. This is a reactive NST. The baby is okay. If the NST is non-reactive, the next test that is indicated is called a biophysical profile. During this antepartum test, an ultrasound is performed to evaluate for normal levels of amniotic fluid and to watch the baby for appropriate movement. This table lists the components of the biophysical profile. The categories evaluated during this testing are the presence of fetal breathing movements, full body movements, and movements of the fetal limbs, in addition to the presence of sufficient amniotic fluid, which is the fluid around the baby, and whether the NST was reactive. Each of the five categories that is observed during the test receives two points. Categories that are not observed do not receive any points. So possible biophysical profile test results will be either 10 points, 8 points, 6, 4, 2, or 0 points. 10 and 8 points are considered normal. 4 or less points usually means that the baby needs to be delivered. Let's move on to intrapartum fetal surveillance. This is the testing of fetal well-being that occurs during labor. We have seen that during an NST, the mom has belts strapped to her abdomen that convey information from the baby's heartbeat and the uterine wall to a machine that converts the information to an electrical signal printed out on a moving paper, the fetal monitoring strip. The belt that collects the fetal heart rate does this using Doppler technology. During active labor, mom is usually connected to this machine continuously. The Doppler device is considered to be external monitoring because it's located externally on the mom's abdomen. Once the fetal membranes are ruptured, an internal monitor can be attached to the fetus that more directly collects the signal from the fetal heart rate. This is referred to as internal monitoring. The illustration on the left shows the external monitors, one that is the Doppler for the fetal heart rate, the other is a transducer that determines the frequency of uterine contractions. The drawing on the right shows an internal monitor that is attached to the baby's head and is also connected to the machine that graphs the fetal heart rate. The internal monitor is called a fetal scalp electrode. The fetal heart rate changes that occur during labor are similar to what we've previously described for antepartum testing. The normal fetal heart rate ranges from 110 to 160 beats per minute with moderate variability and occasional accelerations. Because labor is now occurring, which can stress the fetus, fetal heart rate decelerations are frequently seen. Decelerations are categorized into early, variable, and late types. Early decelerations are considered a normal finding on a fetal monitoring strip. Early decelerations are diagnosed by comparing the timing of the deceleration with the occurrence of a contraction. If the deceleration mirrors a contraction, meaning that the fetal heart rate deceleration starts when the contraction starts, reaches its low point at the peak of the contraction, and ends when the contraction ends, it's an early deceleration. Early decelerations occur as a reflex cardiac response to compression of the fetal head. They do not represent fetal oxygen status. Their presence often means the baby is descending in the birth canal and delivery could be near. Management of early decelerations is suggested here. The next type of fetal heart rate deceleration is a variable deceleration. These decelerations occur when the umbilical cord is compressed in utero. Fetal circulation through the umbilical cord ceases during compression, so fetal blood pressure changes as well as fetal oxygenation. These changes in blood pressure and oxygenation lead to an abrupt fetal heart rate deceleration that resolves just as quickly when compression of the umbilical cord is released. Because the umbilical cord can be compressed at any time, variable decelerations can occur at any time and do not necessarily correlate with uterine contractions. If the umbilical cord compression occurs only briefly, a mild variable will occur. If the cord is compressed for a long time, the variable can be more severe. Variable decelerations that are severe are worrisome for insufficient oxygenation of the fetus and corrective measures should be taken. Here are suggestions for the management of variable fetal heart rate decelerations. 
The next type of fetal heart rate decelerations is the late deceleration. It is called a late because it occurs after the timing of an early deceleration. Remember that early decelerations mirror the timing of a contraction and represent a fetal cardiac response to head compression. Late decelerations start later than earlies. The onset of a late deceleration occurs after the contraction has already begun. The lowest point or nadir of the deceleration occurs after the peak of the contraction and the end of the late deceleration occurs after the contraction has already ended. This type of deceleration represents the fetal cardiac response to insufficient oxygen from the placenta known as placental insufficiency. This is a very worrisome finding on the fetal strip. Late decelerations occur because the baby does not have enough oxygen from the placenta to handle the stress of contractions. Management of late decelerations involves application of maternal oxygen, stopping any contraction medicine, and if lates do not resolve, delivery of the baby by cesarean section. The last deceleration we will consider is called bradycardia, which occurs when the fetal heart rate drops and stays below 90 beats per minute. This low heart rate is insufficient for oxygen delivery to the fetus. Bradycardia is an emergency. Perform a vaginal examination to ensure that the umbilical cord is not prolapsed into the vagina. Stop any contraction medicine and move the patient to her side. If the bradycardia does not resolve, transport the patient to the operating room for emergency cesarean delivery. This is the end of the presentation on fetal surveillance.